So starting with step four, you guys can see we're gonna install a couple bolts, which are gonna go on the side. Actually really hard to see, but there's two bolts that go from the inside into the channels. And then for step five, with the four bolts that go underneath into this channel from beneath. So let's grab number one, and they do have quite a few bolts in here. It looks like a full set of six. So I'm gonna need only two. We'll also go ahead and open number four, so we can grab an Allen wrench that we need. So on the inside of the channel, maybe you guys can see there's a bracket here. So there is thread behind there that'll screw into the channel. So you just line it up and grab the bolt and go ahead and screw it in. So these are braces for more strength. I'm not gonna tighten it yet. I'm just gonna snug it just a little bit. And you guys can't see this, but we've got exactly the same bolt that goes on this side from the inside. So again, we're not gonna tighten it yet. And the reason for that is because we wanna install our bottom bolts first before we tighten the sides. And that's gonna be in bag two. There are four bolts. I'm gonna need the large Allen wrench. And so to make it easier for myself, I'm gonna lift up this back corner and put the spool under there to kind of prop it up a bit. And now I can easily reach to the bottom here with my bolts. But you can just, you know, go off the end of the table or something to make it easier for yourself. But yeah, simple as that, guys. We're just gonna run them down. The only thing you gotta watch out for is these wires here underneath. They're kind of uh, in the way. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. And we are just running them down and not tightening them. And you'll guys see in a second why. But Let's go ahead and flip to the other side and we'll do the same thing here. All right, so those are run down but not tightened. And the reason we don't tighten anything yet is because we want to run down the x-axis with the z wads here all the way down. And you want to spin both of them at the same time here. I'm just doing the coupler because if you spin one, the other one won't spin because they are not tethered. We want the spacing between this channel and this one to be as close as possible to our mounting here. So because we lowered it, we know now that we're very close to where it needs to be because it's naturally micro adjusting itself. You know, since our printer does spend most of its time down here when it starts to print and prints. So yeah, now we can tighten everything, these inner bolts here and also the ones underneath. So I'm gonna do underneath first and then the sides. So now I'm just gonna do the other side and we'll go to the next step. So for step six, they want us to check the voltage setting underneath here. And if you wanna go ahead and do that, you can. It's underneath the printer on the back side here. But I'm gonna do that a little later in the video when we go through the printer. So for step seven and eight, we're gonna be installing the spool holder on the top. And it's quite simple. We're gonna put the two pieces together and then mount it here on the top of the printer. And the bolts that we need are from the number one pack, which the rest of them are. And so the spool part, we'll just insert anywhere here. as a couple of wings there or slots that Slots in, doesn't really matter which ones you pick. Push it in there a little bit. And then we're gonna grab a bolt and start it on there. And we're gonna keep tightening it and it'll pull it in. Snug it up and that's how the spool goes onto the bracket. So here you guys can see we have one, two, three holes. And we are looking at the front of the printer. So the spool holder will go in on this side here where the extruder is. And so there's a couple bolts on the top and there's threads in the channel. So that makes it really easy. And then one here in the front. And just like that, our spool holder is on. So for step nine, we're gonna be putting in the braces and then we're pretty much done. And also down here, we have the filament dryer box connection. So the braces are not very hard to install, but you definitely wanna do it the right way. So on my printer, we have this bracket here pre-installed already on top and the one on the bottom, which is the bolt is also there, but it does look like we need to loosen it. But yeah, well hopefully you guys can see this printer is quite large, but yeah, we're gonna take one of the ends and screw it to the bottom here onto the bolt. And you wanna go reasonably deep, you know, at least half an inch or so, maybe like 10 millimeters or so, or however much that is. And then on the top, we're able to unscrew the bolt up there and line it up with the threads. So we're gonna need our number three package, which has the two bolts, one on each side. So once you get that lined up, we can go ahead and screw the bolt in. So you wanna be careful not to stress this, like don't pull on it. Like if it's not going in easy, you know, go ahead and adjust it where it lines up perfect because you know, you can pull on this and it will flex and you don't wanna do that. You want it to naturally sit where it wants to and tighten it there. So as long as nothing's stressed and everything is going in easy, we can go ahead and tighten the bolt up here and the bolt down here. Go ahead and snug them up. Then you wanna grab your provided open-ended wrench and we're gonna lock in these nuts here down to the tube. So just slightly snug them up. Same thing down here, run them up to the tube and then snug it up a bit. And that's just gonna solidify everything and there's gonna be no play in it. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing on this other side. 
So yeah, guys, again, make sure it all lines up perfect. Last thing you want is the frame to be bent on the top and you know cause binding and whatnot else. And that's it, we are done with the bracing. All right, so for the last thing, we're gonna be installing this dry box and these are really nice. I do have a separate one just like this that actually plugs into the wall. So yeah, if you're not you know, using a dryer already, you might want to look into this but what's really unique about this is that it's made to plug into the printer as you guys can see there's a cord that comes out and on the side of the printer there's a plug here actually the cap is off of it so you can cap it if you're not going to use it but yeah you simply just plug into it it's got a locking washer and now the filament dryer is powered right off the printer and also i'm wondering if there's going to be any kind of functionality between the two from the display. We'll see about that, that should be pretty awesome. And it actually appears that it is because right here we just have a sticker, there's normally a screen here. So they integrated this thing pretty nicely. But yeah, you just simply put your spool of filament in there and then you feed it out the hole here on the top and then you just line it up into the filament detector and then through the extruder into the hot end. And what's awesome is that it's gonna keep the filament dry as it's printing. If you live in humid areas, this is a very big plus. But yeah guys, pretty much we are finished assembling the printer. So I'm gonna clean up everything here a little bit and we'll take a closer look at the S9 Plus. But before that, I just remembered that we need to check our rollers and also take a look at our belt and just make sure everything is running smooth. So on this design, we have three rollers on each side, two on the outside, and then one roller on the inside of the two channels that the bed rides on. So this is a pretty good design as it does have a pretty wide stable rail to ride on. All we want to do right now is check make sure we don't have wobble, which we do. So that means that we are loose. Now the two rollers on the outside of the channel are stationary and then the one on the inside is adjustable. So it's actually guys really hard to see and I don't even know how I'm going to be able to show you this, but for this it might be better to lay the printer down on its side and I'm gonna go ahead and unhook our filament dryer there and so maybe from here you guys can see a lot better what we're working with so these are stationaries and then these are adjustable we are loose right now and it's actually mostly on this one here the other one is a little loose yeah it still needs to be tightened but let's go ahead and tighten this one and so there's a citric nut behind here that you can spin and actually this one's kind of hard to get to because this is where the belt connects or there's a piece of frame there but it is possible to get to it so all right so yeah i just tightened it a little and that seems to be just right so the whole idea here guys is that if you hold the whole thing stationary you should be able to spin the wheel as you guys can see i can spin it it's kind of like a little burnout so it has to be you know tight enough where it's not wobbling but loose enough where you can still spin this so any wheel should be able to spin as long as you can do that this is a perfect adjustment here and same thing for this side so we're too loose here and we need to tighten it up just a bit so let's go ahead and try that so the tricky part here is that when you you know tighten this one this one changes a little bit so you got to be careful not to over tighten something as long as everything is feeling pretty good and you guys can see all the rollers are spinning so they're all touching this should be good right here so yeah i'm happy with that and we literally have no wobble at all and on the front of the printer here looking down you guys can see this is where our idler pulley is what's really cool about it is the way they designed this tensioner so the tensioner actually has two knobs and you can actually you know adjust it to where the pulley is centered on the belt there so if you move this around you guys can see our pulley is a little bit to one side so if we tighten this up just a little bit it should want to go over and sure enough it did and that looks like perfect right there so if you need to tighten it you'll just turn them the same way and then you can micro adjust it to be centered on the pulley yeah and also guys i'm noticing this printer has a really large belt and here we are looking at the back and our y axis here goes to the stepper motor also everything looks nicely lined up there on the gear so the next part we want to check is this x axis so this is quite important to get this one right. And I think we might be a little loose on this one. So we got two stationaries on top and adjustable on the bottom. So let's go ahead and tighten it up just a little bit. Maybe back off just a smidge. There we go. And that feels just right. So it needs to be nice and smooth and your wheel should turn easily like we talked about. Now we do have some rollers here on the outside and then one on the inside that run around these channels here. These you normally don't want to mess with at all, but if you do need to adjust them a little bit, you can. The eccentric nuts are on the inside. Sometimes with these outer rollers, you can't get them perfect for whatever reasons. So as long as you're close enough, don't worry about it because we do have dual Z axes. So everything is very stable going up and down. But yeah, that's pretty much it except for we also want to check the belt tension here on the X and mine is way too tight. So we do have an adjuster here. 
go ahead and loosen it all the way down and then tighten it just a little bit and so for the belts you know you don't want to be too tight but also no slop so looser is better but be careful with being too loose I guess so yeah and you can check these as you print and adjust them a little bit more or a little less the tightness to see you know if you get better print quality but yeah that's pretty much it on the adjustments and so far overall pretty quick with the assembly and not too hard to adjust everything